I'm Joan Jetsetter. I travel, tweet, and blog for a living. Best job ever. Venice, California blew me away when I first visited at the age of 15. I remember walking along the boardwalk and interacting with a cast of eccentrics. Buskers and hustlers trying to make a dollar. Head shops, tattoo parlors, bikinis, the smell of incense. Or at least I thought it was incense at the time. Venice was, and still is, an assault on the senses. Beyond its sand surf and freaks, Venice is also home to a bohemian artist community and a rising tech scene thanks to big shots like Google and Snapchat. With scenery as good as this, it's no surprise that Venice prefers form over function. So I'm off to find my own boho chic outfit at Wayward Debutante, a new vintage store inside of a school bus that's parked at the Love Shack. Owner Allie Jenkins has amassed a colossal collection of one-of-a-kind pieces and collaborates with local artists to make clothes and accessories with a rock and roll edge. I would love to try on a few outfits. Yeah! This could be super cool on you. This is a uh, smoking jacket from the 50s. Awesome. These are definitely one of a kind. She's painted in these jeans for a really long time. Has she ever washed them? or they... She's washed them. OK, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> this is a prize winner over here. It's white mink, and it's vintage with patent leather. So this is something that's really pretty amazing. With a few new looks in the bag, I'm ready to hit Abbott Kinney, which GQ magazine recently dubbed the coolest block in America. It's where you go to drool over models, drink $6 coffees, shop, and pick up weed. Thanks to Proposition 215, medical cannabis is legal in California, and the pharmacy is one of the state's most famous collectives. Organic buds, hash, wax, vape pens, edibles of all shapes and sizes, and even clones for personal cultivation are available to patients with a valid doctor's recommendation. So is there a particular reason why the pharmacy wanted to be on Abbott Kinney? Because it's the most gentrified place in Venice. The biggest kind of secret I think about a lot of the patients we see is that stiletto stoners are <laughs> huge into cannabis, and they're the ones that are buying these really high potency. I think we always picture that like long-haired hippie guy. With the tie-dyed uh, shirt. Can't get off the couch. No. Goatee. We're seeing lawyers, doctors, like professional people, and a lot of them are women. I don't wear stilettos, but I'm a patient who suffers with a sleeping problem. Britta recommends a few drops of an indica-heavy tincture and a few puffs of platinum Girl Scout cookie before bedtime. A healthier alternative to Ambien, thank you very much. One of my favorite places to grab a bite in Venice is Hama Sushi, a local hangout for the Silicon Beach crowd of entrepreneurs and tech geeks. Like Jonathan Eppers, the CEO of a hot new app that helps people find places to live. You know, what's happening in Venice right now is becoming kind of a startup scene over here. Like Snapchat's down the street. I mean, there's a lot of money in this, this area. You know, it's attractive to live by the beach. It's a very laid back lifestyle over here. It's always sunny. The trends I'm seeing is a lot of younger people moving in over here, which is again, pushing the rent prices up. After I had the restaurant randomly sing John Happy Birthday, I let him get back to the office. I had plans to visit another Venetian at work, street artist turned fine artist Jules Muck. Just a few years ago when I first met Jules, she was homeless, making art out of her car on Electric Avenue. She had a breakthrough show at a coffee shop on Abbott Kinney and has since achieved enormous success with her signature green face paintings. And I've seen people with money not be able to cut it here. It's not about can you pay rent. It's like, can you deal with the social insanity and like total chaos that ensues here? This is a tough place to freaking stay because it's the best place. This whole time, Jules was painting a mural of Joan Jett. How cool is that? God, I love this neighborhood. So what better way to end the perfect day in Venice? I'd say either a surf session at dusk or a visit to the Venice Beach Drum Circle, where people young and old, rich and poor, stoned and sober, converge for a celebration of the good life. It's here that I run into Sean, an up-and-coming filmmaker who is making a documentary about Venice's art community. Just the vibe down here, it's just fun. I'm from Michigan, and there's no community of artists. To come here and everybody's doing art, it's like, oh my god, I, what have I been missing for all these years? If you haven't been to this beachside community, you are missing out. After Disneyland, Venice Beach is the second largest tourism attraction in Southern California. Ephemeral art, shopping, surf culture, and a festive circus-like boardwalk are just some of the draws. But for me, what makes Venice unlike anywhere else are the people you'll meet along the way.